University of California, Berkeley, when he entered his graduate student in August 34, as exciting and glamorous, and he took formal courses in chemistry from many of his professors. So he actually got his PhD in chemistry in the spring of 37, with the thesis on the inelastic scattering of fat neutrons, which sounds more like a physics thesis than a chemistry uh, thesis. But in those days, it was hard to tell the difference. It was the depth of the depression. He couldn't, he really hadn't thought about what he was going to do. After he got his PhD, he just felt something would turn up. And indeed, it did. Lewis hired him to stay on as his personal assistant. Uh, this shows Glenn. about the discovery of vision by Hans Meister and Strassmann. And then uh, Macmillan, in trying to put the vision, discovered Neptunia. And also he thought that uh, he also uh, uh, thought that this might be decaying to the next isotope, plutonium. And so when he was called away, Seaborg asked Macmillan, asked in fact, Macmillan sort of just disappeared and went to work on radar at MIT. Seaborg and he had seen each other regularly. They both lived at the faculty club, and one morning Macmillan was no longer there. So Seaborg was quite surprised, uh, asked Macmillan, could he, Kennedy, and Wall go ahead and, and try to identify the next element? And indeed, they did it.
another thing that uh, Glenn enjoyed uh, very much. And so they took time out sometimes to play golf. Uh, this shows the periodic table before World War II. And you notice that uh, neptunium and plutonium are up there under rhenium and osmium. And uh, uh, after the discovery of neptunium and plutonium and the development of the plutonium process for Hanford, Seaborg turned his attention to trying to find still heavier elements and was looking for 94 and 95, I mean 95 and 96, which we now know as Anderson and Curium. They couldn't separate them, and he finally came up with the actinite hypothesis. This is his old original table and it's well worn as you can see but I decided to use the original one. And so he put these down here as an actinite series and when they looked for emerson and period that's why they were actinite. They were indeed able to successfully uh, separate and discover period first and then emerson. And this shows his announcement of emerson and period actually on the quiz kids show. Most of you're too young to Quiz kids show, but I used to hate those little kids. They were so <laughs> they were so smart and so whatever. So here he is with the quiz kids, and uh, this shows him after uh, this. They went back to Berkeley in about '46, uh, taking part of the group from the math lab with them, including Alfie or so. This shows him back at Berkeley with uh, Oppenheimer and uh, E.O. Lawrence at the 100 controls of the 184 inch cyclotron. Um, so uh, this shows, after coming back to California, this shows him um, as one of the 10 outstanding young men of the Chamber of Commerce, young men of 1947, and just by by coincidence, you recognize Nixon here and Seaborg here. This is Miss America. <laughs> <laughs> and why she was with the 10 outstanding young men, I've never been quite sure. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, it shows they were interested in other things as well, I guess. And now I'm jumping ahead to the Nobel Prize ceremony in Sweden, and I chose not to show the king giving him the Nobel Prize or show him and Miss Helen, but I wanted to show Glenn and Helen dancing at the, after the Nobel Prize awards. I think that's a charming picture. Um, then we are moving right along. Most unexpectedly, uh, almost a 99 and 100 were uh, discovered in the debris from Mike explosion conducted on November 1st, 1952 in the South Pacific by Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory. And um, I just missed the discovery of those elements because I was awaiting my, them finding my clearance, which they'd lost. I've never forgiven them for that. But anyway, there were indications something very exciting had happened. Uh, scientists at LDL, including Seaboard and Giorgio, were convinced that uh, new elements have been found together with uh, scientists from Los Alamos and our national laboratory. The new elements like Einsteinium and Fermium were identified. They had been produced by successive neutron captures in uranium and uh, the heaviest one they identified was 255 and it decayed on down to Fermium and uh, uh, Einsteinium. And so this was really sensational. And at the time, we thought maybe super heavy elements could be produced in this way, but that turned out not to be the case. This shows uh, Seaborg as chancellor at UC Berkeley, 1958 to 61. And the, the caption on this is pictures that says, Seaborg shouting. Now, I don't, <laughs> I don't think he quite had to shout at the, at the students in those days. But, uh, now, if we could show, I think. I the next one? Sorry. I'm in this for the A here. I can't be too close to the one. Um, 
York began to broaden his horizons to national public service and served on the first general advisory committee to the Atomic Energy Committee from 1947 to 1950. But he always, his, he has this book called National Service with Ten Presidents. He actually started his service on advisory committees um, during the war years and uh, continued on into the Truman years. Uh, then with Eisenhower, uh, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, and Bush. And I tried to find, thank you, I tried to find pictures of it with all these presidents, and uh, it was a little difficult, but most of them I had. Uh, this shows him uh, with Eisenhower, um, uh, the scientific advisory. Thank you. 